Hi there guys, my name is Jack Courtright. Today we're here to talk about something very near and dear to my heart, a topic in brass playing that's often overlooked, doodle tonguing. So what is doodle tonguing? Doodle tonguing is a multiple tongue, not unlike double tonguing, wherein the second of the two syllables is formulated much closer to the front of the tongue, uh, where a single tongue, a da or a ta syllable is formulated. This makes it different from double tonguing, where the ga or the ka, the second syllable, is formulated much farther back on the tongue. Uh, the result of this is that it creates a multiple tongue with ultra legato properties that can be used in a lot of cool ways. So that leads me to the next point. When? Why do we doodle tongue? Uh, the most prominent and most well-known application of doodle tonguing is used by jazz players, either as a means of fast tonguing that's uh, smoother than a normal double tongue, or even as a default a stylistic choice for a lot of jazz players. <laughs> But that's not the only application. Uh, a lot of people might argue this. Classical brass players, you can take this or leave this. Uh, just know that I'm a classical brass player myself and I've gotten a lot of use out of doodle tonguing for ornamentation purposes. It has been a saving grace at times when a hard multiple tongue or natural slurring on the trombone just doesn't really cut it and it lets you have a lot more facility over the kind of ornamentation that you do. A third reason to learn how to doodle tongue is for the sake of your students. Your current and future students would benefit from you having this in your tool bag. I've known so many people who never learned it because their teacher didn't believe in it, didn't think they could do it, or maybe even just didn't think that they could teach it effectively. Uh, and that's a resource that is now cut off from the student who has no means of learning how to do it. So if not for yourself, then put it in your bag of tricks for students that may benefit from learning it in the future. Okay, so we've got what it is, we've got when and why we do it. Now, the, probably the reason you clicked on this video, how? How do I doodle tongue? So the place that's best, I think, to start is without the instrument in your hand at all. Just figuring out the syllables, because this is a misconception that hangs people up, you know, before they're even on the horse. There's a difference between saying doodle, 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 and doddle, doddle, doddle. One of those is doodle tonguing, one of them is single tonguing. Do you see the difference? Doodle, doodle, doodle. You say it like this, and it's the exact same part of your tongue hitting the roof of your mouth over and over. That's what we call single tonguing. Super useful skill, not what we're here to talk about. So what I want you to do is doddle, doddle, doddle. You'll notice that when you make the old sound, your tongue uh, presses up against the roof of your mouth in a different way than it does when you make a single sound like da or ta. So doddle, doddle, doddle. It feels uncomfortable because it does restrict your airway a little bit more. Uh, that's why when a lot of people start to doodle tongue, it sort of sounds like this. To exaggerate a little bit. Uh, part of learning to doodle tongue is figuring out the coordination of how to get your tongue back out of the way so that air can travel through after you make the second articulation and get a more even sound between the two syllables. So, ask yourself, is it the exact same part of my tongue hitting the roof of my mouth two times in a row? Do, dole, do, dole, do, dole. Then that's not what you want. What you want is doddle, doddle, doddle. Your tongue has to go into a different shape. Uh, you might feel that, that your air is a little bit restricted if you hold your tongue there after the ul. That's okay, you're on the right track. Doddle, 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 doddle. That's what you want. Okay, once you've figured out how to make the syllable, the next step is adding the instrument to it. So, needless to say, just like with double tonguing, which most of you have probably worked on already, uh, the best place to start is with a single note. Like I said, uh, if you're holding the ul in place, it really restricts your airflow and you're going to end up with something like... Uh, the best remedy that I've found this that sort of whips your tongue into shape and gets it out of the way in the way it needs to be out of the way is to just practice playing louder. Don't be afraid to play too loud. Uh, the air is going to help push your tongue aside for the ul and get it out of the way it need the way it needs to be out of the way for clear articulation. Uh, when I was learning how to dual tongue, I was playing in marching band, and I would play our, our half note and quarter note trombone parts in marching band doodle tongued. And 
you know, for those of you who have played marching band, you know it's it's one of the louder mediums, especially for bass players. Uh, so that was really helpful for me in just kind of cracking the whip on my tongue and getting it into shape and able to get out of the way and form the syllables quickly. You'll find that uh, it's really hard to get around the horn, moving the slide at all or moving between partials until you have really gotten a clear sound on both the da and the dole. So really just don't be afraid to put the time in, especially when you're just learning it. That kind of practice is extremely valuable at the beginning of this process. Step three, once you're able to produce a reliable sound on both the da and the dole, uh, you can start moving the slide around a little bit. It's not too difficult of a transition if you're already able to produce clear doodle tonguing, but it is a step. So keep practicing the single notes, but now that you can move the slide around a little bit, especially within the same partial, gives you a little bit more facility with doodle tongue. Step four, uh, if you can move the slide around and get a consistent doodle, you're now ready to try getting around the horn, going in between partials on doodle tonguing. This is one of the most difficult steps as you're learning to uh, incorporate this method, but you got to be able to do it. It's not a particularly practical skill if you can't you know, actually use it to get up and down different partials of the instrument. So, uh, what I always tell people is that the most effective thing is to try it on the mouthpiece. So if you can go, that's doodle tonguing. If you can do that, chances are you can go, might take a little bit of practice because again, uh, your, your air is a little more restricted on the second syllable, but just like we've been talking about, blow through it. You can do this. And if you can do that, doing it on the trombone or on whatever brass instrument you're playing uh, is going to come a lot more naturally because you're going to be connecting your notes and you're going to be uh, keeping your face and your tongue in the shapes that they need to be in in order to make good notes on your brass instrument. Uh, so use the mouthpiece, and once you can get around in between partials and patterns like that, then it's just a it's just a hop and a skip to being able to actually you know get in between partials every note. All right, congratulations if you've made it this far. If you've done these four steps, that means you can now get around the instrument and doodle tonguing. That probably puts you in about the top one or two percent of trombonists in the world, at least in terms of this particular skill set. So kudos to you. Uh, and I, I'll say it, just the obvious here. This is not something that you can learn instantaneously. Just like every other skill that you learn on the trombone, your lip trills, your low range, your high range, your multiphonics, your pedal notes, anything, they need to be practiced regularly in order to really be able to use them effectively and to you know employ them usefully in your music. So if this is something you're interested in, something you would like to develop, develop some more facility with, I'd recommend just putting it into your routine for a few minutes every morning at whatever level you're doing it at. You'll be surprised, or hopefully you won't be surprised, by the results. I think you'll, you'll learn that it's, it's really not such an impossible skill. Uh, it's, it's useful, and for those of you who are interested in taking it to the next level, maybe making it your default articulation or using it to enhance your jazz playing, we're going to be talking about some strategies to do that next time.